Today I'd like to look at the question, what is mental health? Mental health is such a frequently used phrase that we could very easily get sick of it. We're bombarded with mental health this and mental health that and raising awareness of mental health and looking after your mental health and so on and so forth. So we can very easily get inundated with mental health stuff. But what does it mean? What is mental health? And it really isn't as easy to define as we might naively think it is. It's pretty hard to define. And just because we talk about it in such a way and um, there's leaflets entitled look after your mental health and how to look after your mental health that doesn't mean we know what mental health or that the people who wrote the leaflets know. It doesn't mean any such thing really. To be perfectly blunt about it, mental health, what mental health is, is a mystery to us. And maybe it should be a mystery, but it's not that it's a mystery. It's We think we know what it is, but really we don't. That would be a better way of putting it. So very naively I could say mental health is when I feel good. <clears throat> Challenged mental health is when I feel bad. But clearly that isn't true because there's times when it's mentally healthy to feel bad. And there's times when it's mentally unhealthy to feel good. If someone I know has an accident and hurts themselves, then if I feel good, that's not really mentally healthy. And if I feel bad, maybe I'll feel really bad for them. <clears throat> that's mentally healthy. So that's just to give a very simple example of how Feeling good and feeling bad doesn't really come into it. If we make a point of always trying to feel good or avoid difficult feelings, then that's definitely mentally unhealthy. As we, as we all know, that's taking us to a bad place. Bad in the sense that it'll make us feel extra bad as a result of us trying to avoid difficulty. And we kind of know that. So it could be said that one definition of mental health is to say that we are mentally healthy when we are moving beyond ourselves or reaching out beyond ourselves. Or that there is a movement that is taking me beyond who I think I am, beyond the self. And that if that movement isn't taking place, then what we're looking at is stagnation. And the misery that comes about as a result of stagnation. Which is a very familiar and very common type of misery. Stagnation is a very, it's a kind of default setting really. In as much as we don't see moving beyond the self as a, as a real possibility or a interesting possibility. We could also say that mental health is moving beyond the known, what we know about our unknown or familiar way of looking at the world and ourselves. And that again is a movement that isn't necessarily seen as a possibility, far less 
an interesting and fruitful possibility. So then we have the other side of the coin, which is where we either implicitly or explicitly define mental health as being that process by which we're validated, that the self is validated, or that my way of seeing the world, my take on the world is validated, which is movement not away from the self but towards the self. The self is being confirmed and consolidated, strengthened. It's it's been developed to be um, a bigger structure. It starts off small and I keep on building out, building extensions to it and under levels to it and whatever. But it's all the self. So all this activity that is based on extending the self and consolidating the self could be seen as being mentally healthy. And not only could it be seen, it pretty much is seen. That's pretty much how we societally see mental health. So very clearly, these two ways of looking at what it means to be mentally healthy couldn't be more different. So that's a good thing to be aware of. Our orientation, our default orientation, is always towards validation of the self. That's just what happens naturally. It's an automatic process. The self is insecure by its very nature. It seeks to assuage this insecurity. It acts in such a way, and if it can manage to bring about a situation that does make it feel more secure, it sees us as being beneficial and healthy and wholesome. And so here we have the activity of the self, the perennial non-stop activity of the self. So there's two possibilities here. The self is successfully validated, gets to feel good, which, which, which is what we want, and the self fails to be validated. And that feels really bad and that's what we don't like. That might seem like a very, very simplistic picture, but that's the whole of our lives in as much as we're operating out of this static self, this self which is its own goal, the self which never seeks to go beyond itself. And actually, of course, naturally the self never seeks to go beyond itself. It's the fact that it never seeks to go beyond itself, but actually always wants to consolidate itself that makes it a self. It's behaving true to its fashion. So as long as we see ourself, ourselves as being this identity, this self, then we are never going to want to seek anything that lies beyond the self. But this isn't to say that there aren't currents in life. Currents in the dynamics of our own psyche that do wish to move beyond. Because the whole the whole current of life is 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 a current that takes us beyond the known and beyond the self. And it's an irresistible current in the long run. But we resist it quite successfully in the short run. And we see the temporarily, the temporary successful resistance to the main current in life, or the only current in life, 
as being what we want, as being mentally healthy, etc., etc., etc. Our whole emo uh, motivational economy is based on this way of looking at things. What I mean by that is what makes me feel good. So what makes me feel good, I want more of, and what makes me feel bad, I want less of. <clears throat> and what makes me feel good is confirmation, confirmation that I'm right, confirmation that I can get things to be the way that I want them to be, and confirmation that my theories are true, my beliefs are true. Which all comes down to the same thing, validation for the self or validation for our <clears throat> accepted way of looking at things. So, when something happens to prove that my way of looking at the world is the right way, then that's immensely gratifying for me and I really want that motivation. I want, my motivation is to get that to happen as often as possible. So that's the currency in life, that's what I want. That's, I want more of that, yes please, that's the stuff. And I don't see any higher good than that. The euphoria of being vindicated, of being proven right. When we were in the unconscious mode, that's all we got. That's it. If something happens to prove me wrong, it stings like stings like anything. It feels really, really bad. I really resent it. It's like a bunch of hornets just come and stung me on the arse. I'm going to be sore for a long time. And I'm going to be working away trying to prove, well, you know, I am right, really. That was, you know... That was um, false. That that whole thing that just happened there that isn't really that isn't really to be taken seriously. So I try and kind of sweep it away, and spin doctor it as much as possible. And needless to say, that happens an awful lot. It only happens sometimes that I get to be proved right or validated. Most of the time, I'm being devalidated, so I have to fight against that and struggle against that and rubbish it. So that. Probably sounds quite familiar. That's life really, isn't it? That's life. Grasping after the validation and trying to rubbish the devalidation. And get away with it in our own heads so that actually we can believe our own bullshit. That's not a particularly inspiring picture of life. But it's the only type of life we're going to have when we're stuck in psychostatic mode. Psychostatic mode being that mode in which I never want to go beyond. But I just want to celebrate where I am. So it's kind of conservative, it's kind of a redneck type mentality. What we know is good, what we don't know is bad. Again, very, very familiar kind of territory there. So in order to validate um, what I know, I have to keep on reaffirming that what I know and what I do and my way of being in the world and my way of thinking in the world and my behaviour is right. Because unless I can do that, it all becomes very pointless very quickly. It just becomes some kind of absurd and pointless repetition of something that doesn't need at all to be repeated in the first place. But if it's right, then I can keep on repeating it and you know I know that I'm right to repeat it as often as I do. It's like being some kind of religious fanatic. I'll keep on repeating the same stuff over and over again. 
and in their heads the right to do so. If they could see that they're just repeating something just for the sake of making it seem that what they're repeating is right when it isn't, that'd be a different story. And then that behaviour wouldn't persist. That behaviour wouldn't last very long at all. But th this is this is definitely odd. That the only thing we value is stuff that tells us we're right. It's a very dodgy economy. It's a very suspect economy. And it's kind of it's kind of unnatural. It's natural because we all do it and it's the default thing, default fault way for things to happen. But it's unnatural in, in a kind of a sense, it's kind of squalid and crappy. And if we ever stopped validating and vindicating ourselves long enough, we'd get that, we'd know that, we'd know that it's a squalid kind of a carry on. It's kind of small mindedness trying to trying to validate itself the whole time but what can you what's what's so great about small mindedness and there's so much out there what's so great about trying to prove that this little tiny way of seeing things is so much better than ever moving on and seeing things in any other way it's so what i'm trying to say is just this kind of obviously there's a perversity in that and the fact that they that it is fundamentally perverse means that there's no it means that we're against ourselves. We're acting against ourselves. And there's no real feeling. So there's the euphoria, but there's no real feeling of happiness or excitement or joy or all of these kind of um, feelings which feel good, but they're not based on euphoria. So we don't understand that. We only understand the type of good feeling that comes about as a result of lying successfully to ourselves, which is not a great state of affairs. Because there is also the type of good feeling that comes from discovering what's true. True meaning that it's just true. It's got nothing to do with what I want to be the case. It's independently true. It's not and true because I want it to be true. So there is definitely a good feeling from discovering what's true. And that is a good feeling of growing. We're extending our horizons. We're learning stuff that we didn't know before. As I said, we're growing. Growing feels good. Not growing, being stagnant doesn't feel good. So here's a whole different type of economy. And the only thing about this type of economy is that when we were initially challenged or we initially find out that what we thought is true isn't true, there's something that, something frightening about that and devalidating about it if we've invested so much, if we've invested anything in being the way that we previously were. But, to, but once we take that on the chin, once we stomach it, then we get this good feeling from moving beyond ourselves, becoming more expansive. So it's, it's, it's a very curious thing when, when we learn that what we thought was true isn't true. This is the worst news in the world. We resent it mightily and we'll try and get our scrubbing brush out and scrub all traces of that um, thing that we just learned. So we don't learn it. We don't want to learn it. We don't want to grow. And our, and our whole culture is based on successful control on getting things the way we want them to be 
to fulfilling our dreams, etc., etc. And all of that comes down to one thing and one thing only, which is extending the self forever. And if we extend the self forever, we never move beyond the self. And if we never move beyond the self, we're trapped in the self. And if we're trapped in the self, we're stagnant. And that's misery. Albeit misery that can be punctuated by occasional flashes of vindication and euphoria when we temporarily get to prove that we're right. So there are these occasional euphoric high points, but all the rest of it is struggling to disprove all the stuff that's going on that's devalidating, devalidating our position. So most of it's struggling. And a lot of it could be struggling where we're struggling unsuccessfully in the sense that we're fighting against the tide and we kind of know it. And some of it could be struggling where we think we're right to be struggling and so that struggling is validated. But as I've already said, that's all there is to it, either being proved right or doing our hardest to trash anything that doesn't prove us right or that proves us wrong. And all of that exists within this field of stagnation or field of misery that comes about as <clears throat> a result of the psychostatic mode that comes about as a result of being trapped in the self. So because our society is beyond any shadow of a doubt orientated towards building upon the self and never questioning the self and developing the self and getting all of the good feelings that come from extending the self successfully, which is kind of like building a citadel or something and then you're forever reinforcing the battlements. Our society is orientated in the, in the direction of misery. And although society advertises itself by showing us, showing us images of happy people who are in a state of constant euphoria or bliss as a result of being in the psychostatic mode. These are simply lies. And they're lies that we're happy enough to believe just as long as we're afraid of the challenge of moving back into the main current of life. And breaking out of the psychostatic world or the psychostatic bubble. Okay, thanks for watching.